Welcome to EPG Parsala project. Let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Bindu B, working as assistant professor in Marthia Plus Training College, Thiruvananthapuram, Kerala. Today, we are going to discuss about the economic perspectives of education. Let me start the module on education as an investment for human resource development. The main objectives of this module are first, to explain and define the concept of human resources. Second, to explain and identify the relationship between education and human resource development. Third, to analyze the impact of investment in human resources. Fourth, to gain insight into the different forms of investment in human capital. And finally, to elaborate the pros of human resource development. Well, students, suppose if you are asked to give a definition for education, what will be your answer? Many of you may be giving your own version for the subject, aren't you? It is often said that education means different things to different people. From a generic perspective, it simply means the transmission of knowledge from one person to another or the transmission of knowledge from a teacher to a pupil. Many of our thinkers have defined education in different ways. Let's have a look into different dimensions. For Akani, it is the process of molding individuals in society in order to develop their potentials. According to Hornby, education is a process of training and instruction, especially of children and young people in schools and colleges designed to give knowledge and develop skills. It also includes the field of study dealing with how to teach and the process of teaching somebody about something or how to do something. Hollow loop associates education with first knowledge or skill, systematic instruction that is teaching or it can be the obtaining of knowledge or skill through systematic instruction that is schooling or knowledge or skill obtained or developed through systematic instruction or it may result in learning. A program of instruction of a specified kind or level. Example, vocational education, university education and finally, this is the field of study that is concerned with teaching and learning the theory of teaching pedagogy. All these definitions point to the fact that it is essentially a man-making process. Hence, education has got significant relation with human capital. Do human beings have any economic value? Yes, they are not just human beings, but they are worth human capital. What is human capital? Human capital is the acquisition of knowledge, skills and other competencies which have economic value, especially in technically advanced countries. Do you have any idea about the purpose behind investing in human beings? By investing in their people through education and training, countries can enlarge the range of choices available to their citizens, improve their health and economic outcomes, and expand the economic and national well-being. Do you know to what extent the human capital is worth? This may be clear from the fact that nearly Two-third of all economic value in modern industrial economics is created through direct investment in the skills and human capital of the active workforce. As such, a focus on how a nation educates its young people and current workforce speaks to its investment in its own economic future and the realities of achieving its national ambitions. What is the role of education and human capital? Education increases human capital in academic, political and economic ways. Let us see one by one. Academically, education provides training in functional skills such as reading, arithmetic and writing. Higher level cognitive skills including abstract reasoning, problem solving and creative thinking and knowledge of topics necessary to living competently in the modern world. Politically, education socializes society's member to develop strong allegiance to a common national identity rather than tie their loyalties more narrowly to local or religious groups. Finally, economically, education widens people's knowledge, skills and awareness of ideas and practices outside their immediate experiences. In this way, learning makes individual receptive to fresh information, creating a modern person who acquires the aspirations and attitudes which welcome new technologies and make them easier to master them. Importantly, human capital is developed not only through formal education. Above, 
two to three times as much human capital is created at the workplace as in formal learning institutions such as schools or universities. You might have got some experience about the workplace. We learn many things through our exposure, especially how to deal with people of different nature, to adapt to new situations, etc. Let us see the skills learned from a workplace. Skills learned in the workplace include communication skills, team behavior, problem solving, leadership, as well as functional work knowledge and capacities needed in a particular educational or industrial setting. The more complex and demanding the jobs, such as engineers, lawyers, and operational managers, the more opportunities for learning. Increased learning means increased employability and product value. At the same time, jobs which require continual learning tends to have positive externalities. That is, they create work for a number of other new or related jobs. Investment is common term in business world. What does it mean? An investment can be generally described as the use of money for the purpose of profit making or achieving success in business. Technically, the term investment is defined as the process of adding to stocks of productive assets, which may include the acquiring of fixed assets such as buildings, plants and equipment. If so, what does it mean by investment in human resources? An investment may also include spending money to improve the quality of existing human resources in an organization through education. Education is the service sector. Do you know why it is included in service sector? Because it is designed to produce educated men and women who will contribute to the labor market and ultimately to the economy. Given that it is responsible for the development of human resources in any economy, investment in education is equivalent to investment in human capital formation. Investing in education can take many forms including the establishment and management of schools as a business venture and or the acquisition of any particular type of education by individuals to enhance their employment prospects and income earning capacity. Government can also invest in the development of a particular type of human capital considered important to national development. What are the basis for such investment? The major rationals for investment decisions in education includes the following. Let us see one by one. First, production of human capital. What it means is that the economic sector benefit directly from the education sector because the products of education are the skilled or semi-skilled labor for the economic sector. The application of economic principles in the provision of education ensures adequate production of relevant human capital and the reduction of wastage in the process of human resource development. Second is the cost effectiveness. That is, the application of prudential principles in resource utilization in the practice of education ensures that investment in education produces a labor force that is relevant to the economy in terms of quality and quantity. The production of irrelevant labor amounts to increased unemployment and a waste of education resources. Third is the program planning. That is, adequate investment in education ensures that suitable education programs are properly planned and implemented for the various levels of education. This is irrespective of whether the system of education is formal, informal or non-formal. Lastly, the creation of awareness. Students in various fields of study are exposed in the course of their study to the economic opportunities and benefit that accrue from the careful application of the skills they have acquired through education. The student is also equipped with necessary managerial skills that will enable him or her to function in the world of work and entrepreneurship. Definitely there comes a question, why we need to make investment in education? We know education is a lifelong process. It is to be noted that 20th century has witnessed the miracles of human resource development activities reflected through increase in gross national product and overall productive activities. Education is considered as a source of developing human resources and accelerating economic growth. This is because education that develops 
the growth producing capacities in people alone can contribute to economic growth. There are four growth producing capacities that educational strategy may manifest itself in. The first is the general social condition milo for economic growth, which means that a general increase in literacy that facilitate living conditions and social mobility will be the result of this capacity. The second capacity is the ability to develop complementary resources, that is new resources for factors which are relatively in plenty and substitutes for comparatively scarce resources. Education by developing the managerial talents in people can make them use more and better natural resources and invent new resources as substitute for scarce one. Without education, people would be far less adaptable to varying production needs. The third growth producing capacity is that education possess is the durability of educational investment. Education has more durability than most other human that is physical reproducible goods. In countries where life expectancy is long, where people live and work for more number of years, the durability is still longer. The depreciation of human capital occurs at a slower rate than for physical capital. Physical resources may soon go out of date, but with reference to human capital, only the specialized training of the lowest sort will become completely out of date. The fourth growth producing capacity of education is the result of education being an alternative to consumption and private investment in physical capital. When we spend money on education, we may also do at the expense of the consumption which means that is foregoing some other convenience. When the government spends money on education, we may call it as investment in education. It does so at the expense of outlay for other than educational ends. Even though human resource development and human capital formation seem similar, there are certain differences. What does it actually mean by human resources? Human resources refer to all the human beings in an organization. In the generic sense, it may be used in reference to the population of a country. For instance, India is believed to be rich in human resources because of its large population. Human beings constitute resources because in their developed state, that is being adults, they can be engaged in the production of goods and services. In their undeveloped state, usually that is in childhood, they constitute potential factors of productivity. The labor force on the other hand refers to the men and women in a country who are physically and mentally ready for employment in the production of goods and services. It excludes school children and adults who cannot take up wage employment. Human resource development refers to all the activities directed towards the preparation of individuals or groups for the positive engagement in the economic sector. It includes all education programs, on the job or in service training, skill acquisition programs and industrial training schemes. Human resource development, usually known as HRD, has been defined by various scholars in various ways. Let us have a look into the various definitions. According to Leonard Nadler, human resource development is a series of organized activities conducted within a specialized time and designed to produce behavioral changes. In the words of Professor T. V. Rao, human resource development is a process by which the employees of an organization are helped in a continuous and planned way, first to acquire sharpened capabilities required to perform various functions associated with their present or expected future roles, second, develop their capabilities as individual and discover and exploit their own inner potential for their own and or organizational development purpose. Third, develop an organizational culture in which superior subordinate relationship, teamwork and collaboration among subunits are strong and contribute to the professional well-being, motivation and pride of employees. Let us have a look into the definition of Imam Khan. According to him, Human resource development is the process of increasing knowledge, capabilities and positive work attitudes of all people at all levels in a business undertaking. 
Moving on to the essential features of human resource development. These are the essential features. Human resource development is a process in which employees of the organizations are recognized as its human resource. It believes that human resource is most valuable asset of the organization. It stresses on development of human resources of the organization. It helps the employees of the organization to develop their general capabilities in relation to their present jobs and expected future role. Next, it emphasizes on the development and best utilization of the capabilities of individuals in the interest of the employees and organization. Next, it helps in establishing, developing better interpersonal relations. It stresses on developing relationship based on help, trust and confidence. It promotes team spirit among employees. It tries to develop competencies at the organization level. It stresses on providing healthy climate for development of the organization. Human resource development is a system. It has several subsystems. All these subsystems are interrelated and interwoven. It stresses on collaboration among all the subsystems. It aims to develop an organizational culture in which there is good senior subordinate relations, motivation, quality and sense of belonging. It tries to develop competence at individual, interpersonal group and organizational level to meet organizational goal. It is an interdisciplinary concept. It is based on the concept, ideas and principles of sociology, psychology, economics, etc. It forms an employee welfare and quality of work life. It tries to examine, identify employee needs and meeting them to the best possible extent. It is a continuous and systematic learning process. Development is a lifelong process which never ends. Next, we will pass on to the need for human resource development. The purpose of human resource development is to provide the coaching needed to strengthen and grow the knowledge, skills and abilities that an employee already has. Human resource development usually begins as soon as an employee is hired and continues throughout that employee's tenure with the organization. The human being as such is not a resource. He becomes a resource only when he is trained, developed and allocated to productive work. In the words of Nadraja, human resource development that is HRD is a complex process. It components include health, education, youth, welfare, social service, games and sports. Among these, education is considered as an important form of investment in human resource development. Why? Because youth with high scientific and technological specialization is considered as the first rate human capital who can boost the economic growth of the nation and prove to be the new engine of the world economy. Adam Smith, the father of economics, considered a man's talent to be a part of his fortune as well as the society to which he belonged. Adam Smith believed in the concept of human capital. Expenditure on education is an investment in human skills and productive capabilities. Moreover, it is true that there are many kinds of work which can be done as efficiently by an uneducated as well as by an educated workman. Education, however, confers greater indirect benefit. It stimulates the mental activity, fosters in the learner a habit of wise inquisitiveness, make one more intelligent, more ready and more trustworthy in one's ordinary work. It helps the individual to improve life within and between social classes. This means of achieving social mobility and discovering the latent abilities of those who would otherwise have died unknown, unwed and unhonored. Expenditure on education may be justified more on the basis of indirect or external benefits than on the basis of the increased future earning power of educated workers. Education therefore is more a consumption than an investment. What are the means for human resource development? Human resource development comes in different form including on the job training or job shadowing, test book or online education, growth opportunities and compliance training. On the job training refers to learning the aspect of a job while one is doing the job. An employee may know the basics of what the job requires, but specifics like which form to be used 
what materials are stored and how to access the computer systems may require on the job training. Job shadowing is similar in that you watch another employee do the job in order to develop the proper skills. Another form of development is intellectual or professional development which includes college or certification courses or job specific trainings and seminars related to how to do one's job better. Investment in human capital over two decades in 17 emerging economies has accounted for about half of a percentage point in their annual growth. And it is found that one more year of schooling can increase gross domestic product per capita by 4% to 7%. Investment in human capital is essential for the economic development of a nation. All developing countries are trying to invest more on every sector. But investment in human capital may be responsible for much rapid rise in the real income of the country. The benefit of the increased investment in human capital can be measured by the increased earning potentials. Alfred Marshall viewed education as a national investment. And in his opinion, the most valuable of all capital is that invested in human beings. T.W. Schultz view human resources as a form of capital, a produced means of production and the product of the investment. Education is the investment in human capital. It can of different forms, expenditure of education, on-job training, institutional training, formerly organized education, adult education, etc. Investing in education is critical to fostering growth and innovation for generations to come. Technological change is creating new opportunities and presenting new challenges. Improving our children's education is the surest way to ensure a brighter future. Let me make the investment function very simple. For example, without education, a man or a woman is economically similar to uncultivated or unimproved land. The expenditure that one incurs on the maintenance of one's health is something similar to the expenditure, just like protecting the land from fire or erosion. Future earning value of such an individual will be limited to his or her native endowments of strength, quickness and effort. Education, training and development of skill will raise his economic value. To raise the economic value, he must be developed as a human resources as we develop the resources of the earth or soil by cultivating it by tilling, watering, adding manures or fertilizers. Investment must be made in him which means we need to spend money on him now to increase his future earning power. And the important investment is in his schooling and training. Education is a means for economic development. Education has been and will continue to be the potential cause for change in any society. Realizing the importance of education, the rapid economic development of the nation, the Secondary Education Commission has observed that the aim of secondary education is to train the youth of the country to be good citizens who will be competent enough to play their part effectively in the social reconstruction and economic development of the country. Educational programs can accelerate the pace of growth and prosperity of a nation. It is in a position of transforming itself into a developed nation by 2020. In the words of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, education is an endless journey through knowledge and enlightenment, which could open up new vistas of development. The wealth of nations depend on how effectively young minds are trained and educated to take up the challenges of the future. Qatari Commission has rightly remarked that the destiny of the country is being shaped in her classroom. Hence, we should strengthen our educational programs carried out in the country from elementary level to the higher education. While the school education equips the society with the enlightened workforce, higher education provides competent leadership by supplying a well-developed human resources such as engineers, doctors, managers, teachers and so on. It is this human resource which finally takes the responsibility of operating the development of the nation. Education is a process of enriching human beings by systematically imparting 
knowledge, skills and training in life in different capacities. It is through several years of schooling and work experience in institutions of higher education that young man or woman equipped himself or herself for gainful employment. According to Rao, as a result of the training given in the educational institutions, the pupil must acquire productive capacity, be in a position to act in the sum total of production, and in fact, more than they would have done in the absence of education. Therefore, education is considered as a process of investment in human capital. The five important ways to develop human resources are Health facilities and services broadly conceived to include all expenditure that affect the life expectancy through strength and stamina. Second, on-the-job training. Next, formally organized education at the elementary, secondary and higher levels. Fourth one, study programs for adults that are not organized by firms including extension programs notably in agriculture. Fifth one, migration of individuals and families to adjust to changing job opportunities. In the wider sense, investment means expenditure on health, education and social services and in the narrower sense, it implies education and training. This investment would help to overcome many characteristics of labor force that act as an impediment to greater productivity. The major barriers experienced are illiteracy, unreceptiveness to new knowledge, fear of change, lack of incentives, immobility, etc. Could we adopt this strategy in educational planning thereby accounting to country's growth? That is, human resource approach in educational planning is needed. Manpower approach is otherwise called human resource development approach. Why this is needed? For the social and national development of a country needs the development of human resources. These human resources have well-defined knowledge attitude and skills. The training and development of human resources is the first and foremost concern of a nation. The training and the development also changes with the changes in economic, scientific and technological developments. Development of human resources is only possible through proper educational planning. When educational planning takes into account of human resources needed by the country, it follows manpower or human resource development approach to manpower planning. Manpower is a variable and the requirement of manpower changes from time to time. Manpower planning aims at the production of more human resources in more demanding professions of the time. Unemployment can occur due to improper manpower planning. Manpower planning relies on the fact that education must be linked with jobs. Some of the advantages are increase in productivity, increase in earning capacity, more sophisticated technology, reduction of crime, improved public health, greater political engagement, greater political civic engagement. So, to conclude, what we need is to develop our nation is a mass movement to educate our masses irrespective of their class and region. Never bother about the money we spend, it is not expenditure, but it is only an investment for the future. Thank you.